Welcome to Kondo Insider on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Attorney Nalan. Join me today is our guest, Mr. Damien Esparza, founder of Smart Property. Mr. Esparza has worked in the community association industry for over 20 years, specializing in capital reserve studies. He owned and operated one of the industry's oldest reserve study companies, Barrera and Company, before funding Smart Property. His new company provides the first ever cloud-based capital planning platform designed specifically for community associations. A trademark name is Living Reserve Study. He has been featured in Forbes, Hawaii Business Magazine, and San Diego Business Journal. Uh, such a great pleasure to have you today. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Damien, uh, can you tell us more about uh, this living reserve study tool uh, for property managers and condominium associations? Yes, the living reserve study is a asset management system designed specifically for community associations. We focus on the component inventory as well as the capital planning and analysis and the project tracking of the, 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 the budgets that you're setting aside for for these, these repairs. Uh, and it's all on the cloud. So you can access it anytime, anywhere. Um, our belief is that the information that you have to make decisions on when it comes to funding your repairs and developing a plan should be living. It should be accessible and it should be something that you can access and grow with over time uh, versus what we've really been using in this industry for the last you know, 20 plus years that, and that I've been in it, which are static reserve studies, right? They're paper-based or Excel spreadsheet and that information gets lost. So ultimately the, the boards have to recreate the wheel and they're left with less information to make really big decisions. And so what that does is it creates a culture of deferral where decisions don't get made. And over time, you know, that creates deferred maintenance and it costs more, you know, to get those jobs done. And in a lot of situations, boards as volunteers don't have the tools or mechanisms to ultimately, uh, you know, get or garner the trust from their communities. Uh, and then that leads them to, and again, to this kind of the spiral of deferral. So uh, if my understanding is correct, it is really you're utilizing new technology to transform those traditional paper-based reserve study done by professionals. On top of that, you're basically using technology to make this report more accessible and that could be updated uh, as you have more data, you know, from daily operations. Is that correct? Uh Absolutely. And I think one of the real value adds uh, for associations, you know, at the end of the day, these are nonprofit mutual corporations, right? So associations are businesses, but these businesses are unique because they're, they're not in the business of making money. And they're in the business of really the, the, the purpose is to preserve, protect, maintain these common area assets, right? That's the fiduciary responsibility of these boards. And one of the things that they strive for because they're nonprofit is to keep the fees as adequately low as possible. And this is a struggle in, in, in this industry, right? Um, a lot of people, when they build, whether they, they buy into an association, um, we call it, you know, the, the self-cleaning toaster oven mindset, right? They think that the association is just going to self-clean itself, right? They don't understand that this is a business and the costs go up to run a business. And the only, the true source, the primary source for that in many associations is just the assessments themselves, right? And so that has to come from those owners. And when they don't increase those, those, those contributions and, and those fees, they get in a little bit of trouble. So the real, the real value that we see is how can we help extend the useful life? So you, if you have good access to your information, what's the information that can help extend useful life for your components to ultimately save them money when it comes to these contribution increases that they have to um, sometimes uh, absorb? So the better information you have, the better strategies you have, the better confidence you have. And so all it really comes down to is trust and transparency. Um, and giving owners more control over that process. Yes, we've all read in headline news, you know, locally and nationwide, you know, nothing pissed off the unit owners more than getting a letter basically saying you're about to increase the maintenance fees two times or three times, or all of a sudden everybody needs to get a loan. The association needs to borrow from the bank to replace or repair certain major components of the building. And as we all know, if you properly found your reserve studies that was property down, so, you know, there shouldn't be 
many occasions of special assessment and borrowing. It so really the planning ahead is super important. And the typical mistakes made by certain boards are, you know, kicking the can down the road like a deferring. Yes. And that's why we're here today having a second session in this year talking about budgets, uh, reserve studies for associations. And, you know, we are in a very interesting time period right now, as you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, before we start the show, we, we talk, you know, uh, Hawaii, you know, this market, we're having seeing skyrocketing insurance premium, you know, increases at the same time nationwide, worldwide, actually, every price tag is increasing. Uh, this is definitely more challenging because we do have a lot of old buildings in town. So what if from your, you know, professional point of view from an industry, uh, you know, standpoint, like what's the trend you see down the road on capital reserve studies? And, you know, is there any way, you know, for people to come out of these challenges, better strategize on that? Yeah, you know, that, that's a really good question. Um, the, and I, I would say that, you know, not only are we dealing with inflation, right? And you're dealing with, with, with uh, limited contractors and, you know, and supply and market and demand, um, you know, supply chain challenges, you know, I, you know, I, some recent news came out. I think some, they feel some stuff is stabilizing to, to a certain degree. But in our industry, you know, as we were sharing, you know, one of the big canaries in, in the coal mine are, is what's not included in the reserve study. The elephant in the room really is looking at plumbing repairs, right? Which traditionally have not been incorporated within, you know, the capital reserve plan because it was considered life a project. But in states like Hawaii, where really these these associations, these the condo associations, the concept of them really incepted in the 60s, they're now facing that issue. And we're seeing it more and more around how do we fund these repairs? So the necessity to develop a strategic plan to address this and then effectively communicate that to your owners becomes more and more critical. The job of a reserve study becomes less about setting the reserve contributions and really about strategic planning. And that really requires some thought, some patience, uh, some deliberation, um, right, in terms of, of how we're going to approach this. Um, and that, I think, is those are some of the bigger headwinds that we see right now in, in the marketplace. Uh, and what happens when you don't, right? Well, you know, you you throw good money after a bad solution, you know, i.e. you're throwing, you know, money on plumbing repairs, which really are spiking up your operational costs, right? And then you end up not funding those reserves. And then the insurance companies start hitting you with higher premiums. So it's a critical point for board members to really think and, 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 and remember that they're running a business. And the more information you can effectively communicate to your owners, the better off you're going to be. In terms of relief, you know, what, 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 what opportunities are, for, are, are there for relief? The most, I think the most, the, the most optimistic, you know, things that we see really are what are the different technology composites that can extend useful life of an asset? Um, really thinking uh, aggressively about your maintenance you know, ultimately, if you do good maintenance, you can extend life. You're essentially, you're buying time of that asset. And those are things that we see, you know, some of the more sophisticated or smarter associations think about um, when it comes to their CapEx planning. Yeah. So, uh, you know, for the benefit of our audience who are not familiar with a reserve study, you know, those things could be really lengthy, over 70 pages. Uh, for any layperson to look at it, that's like a sleeping aid materials. Uh, can you, you know, help us, you know, like understand, for example, if, you know, a unit owner or a new board director is presented with a copy of such as reserve study report, what other career, uh, key areas they should pay attention to? And are there any red flag signals uh, someone can detect uh, just based on information there, you can already diagnose uh, associations in bad financial shape? Yeah, you know, th that's a great question. The, the other, besides sleep aid, it, you know, we, it's the most expensive paperweight you might ever buy, right? Um, and, and I say that a bit in jest because they're just really hard to, to understand with all the tables of information and whatnot. Typically when I look at a reserve study, the thing that I'm looking at first, the item I'm looking at first is I want to look at what the funding plan looks like. And I want to know, is that graph stay cash flow positive over a 30 year duration, or does that graph go cash flow negative? Um, those are the first things that will give me a telltale in terms of, of uh, you know, what, what are we working with here, right? You know, is, is, this, is there a high quality problem where they have, you know, some very sufficient funds, a, a reasonable capital plan over the next 30 years, and you have a lot of cushion 
Um, and so we're just looking to keep maintain that and maybe put some more buffer or contingencies in that just to keep it at that level. Or are we really having to think about strategic planning? Meaning they have more work to do than money they have. And we need to think about phasing out some of these projects. We need to think about potentially a special assessment or some kind of contribution plan that's going to be able to, to kind of triage the work that needs to be done. Maybe punch some, some you know, effective maintenance plans into that the, the, from a dollar perspective into extending some life of some of the bigger components. Um, so those, that's kind of what goes in, into my head when I, when I look at an initial reserve study in terms of you know, what are the red flags. I also want to know what, and this is kind of like a back of the envelope number, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll ask them, what are your assessments? And then figure out what are your contributions? If, for example, if it's an older townhome, we know if, if like, for example, an older townhome, if they're only putting 20 cents of every dollar, right, into their reserves, uh, townhome, 30 doors, or I should say 300 doors, we know that that's not enough, right? We know that they should be probably putting about 30 cents, right? Ballpark, maybe 35 cents of every dollar. That's just based on some analysis that we've done over the years, um, looking at what healthy versus non-healthy associations are. So we kind of can do some benchmarking on that. Another big telltale for me is, is this an association with, let's say, less than 100 units? If it's, a, if it's an association with less than 100 units, 30 years old, and they haven't been putting money away, there's only so much pain that you can spread around you know, on, on 30 doors, right? Um, so the less number of units, in, in my opinion, you know, ultimately the, the higher that special assessment you know, price might be um, if they haven't been funding you know, for, you know, a, at an adequate level for, for a very long time. Because the other thing that we're always thinking about is what's not included in the reserve study, right? Understanding windows, are windows included? What do the CCNR and bylaws say? Windows is a big one. Are there other building envelope issues that might not be included? Ensuring that all the mechanical equipment may be in there. And then last but not least, like I shared before, plumbing, right? So cosmetically, sometimes those aren't things that people look at when they first look at a reserve study. You know, a lot of people will focus on photos because they understand the photos, but it's not so much the things that you can see, it's the things you can't see within a building that typically drive up the cost a lot um, when it comes to the capital repairs and or special assessment. Uh, I think you just uh, include some technical terms about the funding plan. Uh, you, you mentioned there's percent percent funding. There's also cash flow methods. Can you give us, you know, the you know explanations on these basic terms so that you know our audience can understand our conversation better? Yeah. So you, you know, and I want to make a distinction. I, I you know what I was sharing was you know, back of the envelope, what, what we will look at is what are your total assessments and what percentage of those total assessments are going into and in, in, contributing into reserves, right? So is that a 30% mm -hmm. or, you know, another, another number? But that is just a, a baseline numerator divided by denominator. The, the other number that's used in our industry, though, is considered what we like to call percent funded. Percent funded is just an indication of your financial strength today. Think of about as a snapshot of your balance sheet. And the, the, the formula there is very simple. It takes your total reserve cash and as an asset and it divides it by a denominator. And that denominator is considered your accrued, if you will, liability, right? You know, how much money should you have in the bank today, given all of your components, their replacement cost and their current effective age. And that will give you an idea in terms of what their indication of financial strength is. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges I've seen in my 20, 20 plus years, 22, 23 years of working in this industry is a lot of boards will focus on that number. The challenge is you can be 60, 70 percent funded today. But if your cash flow plan is going negative in 5, 10, 15 years, whatever it is, because you have a huge spike of, an, of, of, of a project coming you know, down the road. I don't want to live in that association because you're ultimately going to have to do a big increase. Right. So, you know, that's something that you really need to look at. You know, so going back to if you're an owner, right, what's our percent funded? Right. That's a number that's worth looking at. But then how does that relate to the cash flow plan? Right. Is that cash flow mm -hmm. plan, you know, steady going up and up and down? Right. Based on expenses coming in and obviously income coming coming in as well. Expenses going out, excuse me. Um, or is that going negative? So those are really important indicators, you know, to look at. So that's what percent funded, right? Everyone kind of uses that. That's kind of our hallmark in, in this industry, understanding your indication of financial strength. Then we have what we call funding plans, right? And so State of Hawaii has two modes that or models that you can adopt. One is called your cash flow plan, which essentially just like it sounds, 
you have to have enough cash in the bank for every year for a, over a 30 year period to cover those expenses. It can be $1. Now the challenge with that model or that plan, if you will, is it doesn't have a lot of buffer. So if you're off in price, in you know components, right? Included or non-included, any type of assumption. And let's be honest, reserve studies are a lot of art and a lot of science, right? It's 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 not predictive in nature. It's a capital planning tool. It is a budgeting tool, right? So you know it's not going out and getting scopes of work for every single project you're doing. And we don't know exactly what inflation is going to look like in the future, right? Maybe we can say we, what we think in the next two to three years. But what's four, five, six, and, and so forth. So that's why we recommend getting these refreshed every year, at least a financial refresh, if you will. So the so that so that you know cash flow plan leaves you really minimal in terms of your buffer for risk management from a perspective. And then the other option in the in the industry is what they call percent funded. And so at that point, you're basically running a 50 percent funded level, right? And so that's a huge buffer. And you know, us as you know, professionals that want to give recommendations, we will always go with the more conservative approach, right? We'd always say go with percent funded. It's going to give you um, a more uh, a larger buffer, better risk management, if you will. Um, but you know, what's the challenge of that, right? Well, in a lot of situations, unless an association has putting been putting away, you know, every dollar from you know day one of its birth, if you will, which typically doesn't happen at all you're essentially having to do a huge spike or a huge increase in what that contribution is going to be. And then hence what the assessments are going to be. And so we don't see that a lot, you know, in associations, unless they've already kind of started that, you know, training, if you will, of their, of their planning from an early inception of those uh, components. The other challenge with that model is if, you know, you said, Hey, we want to do that now, essentially all of those other owners that lived in the association that aren't in there now, they got free rent on the component because they weren't putting money into the kitty every year based on usage, right? Which is one of the challenges of, of you know, common interest capital reserve planning, right? You're not supposed yeah. to be putting money away based on when it was replaced. You're supposed to be putting money away every year based on your use of that component. So if you don't do that from day one and you do a big spike in terms of wanting to get to a percent funded level, it does create heartburn. And that's one of the, the challenges, I think, with that adoption of that plan and why most associations, you know, go the path of least resistance, which is the cash flow plan. I see. So based on your experience, because like I think uh, Hawaii, they just require like a 50% statutory minimum if association choose to fund the estimated replacement reserve assessments, uh, you know, a percent, uh, you know, or if they, you know, they use the cash flow, cash flow plan, they would have to fund 100%. Compare with the other states, uh, where where are we uh, as a state, uh, you know, in terms of the spectrum? Are we on the more restrictive conservative side or we are kind of like, you know, lagging behind? I, I will say, you know, the fact that Hawaii has a, a requirement to fund your reserves is better than most states. Oh, that's good news for yeah, us. Yeah, it is. I, I yeah, mean, but we also you, have corrosive air here, right? Components tend to de deteriorate real faster here. Yeah, yeah, true, true. But I would say that 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 you know, you know, I believe the law was passed in the initial. The first law was passed in '92, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I would say that that Hawaii was on the forefront of this, um, and I think that's a really good thing um, because a lot of this is about conditioning people's expectations. It's about conditioning homeowners' expectations. At the end of the day, this is about homeowners. And the perceived value that they see, uh, you know, of of the association and where their money's going, right? And I think in some in some situations, there's they don't see a lot of perceived value, right? They only see, you know, what they see in front of them. You know, they don't understand like that the fact that they're running a that they're part of a business and it's got an ongoing concern and it's got to operate like a business and it needs funds to operate like a business in order for them to get those high property values that they want, right? You know. Yeah. Everyone goes to Zillow and says, did you see what the neighbor's house went for, right? But there's a cost to that. And when you live into a community association, right, that's part of what this contribution is for, right? So I think that's a critical component of connecting the dots and telling that story. Um, but that being said, uh, I would say Hawaii versus a, a lot of other states um, is in a much better situation in terms of requiring um, either funding model, either cash flow, which means you have to have all that money for that specific year in, in the account. 
um, mm -hmm. or a 50% funded loan. Yeah, so talking about the law, you know, we do have a new law passed this year, Act 199. Uh, the legislative bill number is SB 855 regarding association budget uh, replacement reserves. Uh, so this new law actually brought a lot of positive changes to the existing laws. For example, you know, as all we know, Honolulu County, you know, like there will be about 400 buildings subject to that five sprinkler ordinance, um, uh, you know, those buildings need to come up either, you know, they're going to install automatic sprinkler system or they need to pass that life safety evaluation assessment, which are expensive projects. Uh, this new law now requires association's annual budget, which is the packet all unit owners receive before every annual meeting. They must include summary with details of the estimated cost of such fire safety equipment or installations that meet the requirements as required by the city's ordinance, provided that the reserve study may forecast a loan or special assessment to fund uh, the life safety components uh, or installation, because, you know, this occurred wasn't on, you know, a lot of project minds. It, it was, you know, the, the law passed because of the 2017 Marco Polo fire accident. Uh, the, the new law also made changes, uh, you know, basically emphasizing again, if the association's the reserve study was not prepared by an independent reserve study preparer, it must be reviewed by, uh, by a professional like that, not less than every three years. Uh, it clarified that managing agent with industry reserve study designations um, does not have conflict interest. They can be the one preparing for uh, the study reserve study for associations. Uh, and also uh, more specifically, they do want, um, you know, additional details be included when they, uh, in the reserve study report, including disclosure of component of association property omitted from the reserve study and the basis for the omission, which is the exact point Danny highlighted in our prior conversation. And also planned increases in the estimated replacement reserve assessments over the 30-year plan and whether the actual estimated re replacement reserves assessments for the prior year as defining the study was less than the assessments provided for in the reserve study and if so, how much and explain the impact of the lesser assessments on future estimated replacement reserve assessments. So hopefully this new law will also, uh, you know, bring positive things and also remind all the board directors that you do owe the fiduciary duty to properly adequately fund your reserve study of replacement reserves for your building, which is basically protecting the investment for everybody. Um, not just now, you don't have the mentality of, I'm going to only be leaving in this project for a few years, so who cares kicking the can down the road, but what about your heirs or whoever is going to take over your projects, uh, your unit, your investment, leaving a legacy, a good legacy for all the future owners that could be your children, your grandchildren. And yeah. before we wrap up, Damien, uh, can you summarize a takeaway point for our audience today? Uh, be good stewards, right? Be good stewards for your community, for your building. Um, you mentioned legacy, right? Um, you know, I think to sit on a board as a volunteer uh, in itself is, is you know, it's, it, they're not getting paid, right? They're, they're investing their time and we all know how valuable all of our time is. Um, so, you know, I think those that may not have served on a board, think about serving on a board um, and, and really practice um, good stewardship for um, helping our communities thrive uh, and, and, and be safe, right? And, and protect these common area assets. Um, so, you know, that, that we do have nice places to live and, and good communities to participate, you know, our, our life in. That's great. Thank you so much for your time, Damien. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website.
thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.